Hey, once again, you've fallen into Hella Vela and found yourself another lawless interview. Today, we're here with Vela author Christopher Stanfield, and he is the author of one of my favorites, which is called The Wiles of Esther. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. Yeah? Do you want me to call you Chris or Christopher? Christopher's okay. Okay, very good. So um, everybody on Hella Vela gets the same first question. When did you start writing? Well, um, I've always sort of wanted to be a storyteller. Um, The way I wanted to tell stories has changed over the years. I remember I wanted to be an actor first. That was sort of Mm -hmm. the dream. And I have a stutter. So the fear of that kind of in junior high, I was like, I wanted to go into the drama department, but the fear of not being able to overcome that held me back. So I didn't pursue acting. And so they ended up, that's when I kind of discovered that if my actual voice is getting in the way, writing still allows me to have that ability to have a voice. And so that's when I started. So if I can't tell stories as an actor, I want to tell stories in this way. So I started to write. I think the first story I actually wrote, I was 14. Um, I had a notebook by hand, um, you know, just with a pen. And uh, I wrote, wrote, it's the first time I wrote a complete story from beginning to end. And so that's kind of where it got got started. Wonderful. Did you let anyone else read that at the time? I think some of the, my friends, uh, they, they had, uh, I, I I let them. Yeah. But that, that's probably about it. Right. Right. I was probably at that age, I probably wouldn't let anybody look at it, I don't think. (laughs) I was one of those odd kids, too, that any time the teachers gave an assignment to write, I was excited about that, any chance to get to do that. And that was the one time I was always loved, teachers would always tell me, you need to continue to do do this. They always seemed to like um, what I did. I remember a, a senior high school project where the assignment was to reinterpret the first act of of Macbeth. Oh boy! I decided to do it in sort of a modern interpretation, like more of a futuristic interpretation. And that was the first time that I had someone that was an adult say, "You need to write your own stuff because this is g- 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 good." <laughs> encouraging and that feels good to hear doesn't yeah. it yeah so we i guess you were still in high school then yeah. right okay yeah. okay and uh so when did you start self-publishing i did my i self-published my first book in november of 2020 so i i, I over the years i had started stories wrote a few chapters had all kinds of excuses not to finish them, put them off to the side, start another story. And I would do this sort of for this whole time. And so I had a, a, a story that I was writing, got about five chapters um, into it. And I just couldn't seem to get anywhere with it. And so I put it off to, to the side again. And I had a, 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 another idea. Mm-hmm. I wrote about four or five cha- chapters of it and came to the same problem. I could not, I don't know if it was the motivation or if I was trying to find excuses, whatever it was. My wife encouraged me to in, go back to school because I never had the chance to finish co- college. So I enrolled in a, in a creative, um, the writing pro- program uh-huh. at, uh, in college. And one of the first classes I took was a workshop class. And the final project was the first two chapters um, um, of, 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 uh, from a book. And mm-hmm. so I thought about this story that I started a few chapters in, I'll use that as my final project. Mm-hmm. And so I turned those two chapters in and over the course of getting the feedback from the teachers and the pupils, I had this spark of inspiration. And so the, each course is about an eight week course. So by the end of the eight weeks, I wrote the whole th- thing. Oh, so, and I was like, okay, if you're you've been putting this off for a like a decade, it, if you're gonna if if you if you want to do this, let's let's do it. So I finished that book. 
I started to write the next one. I completed it in two months or so, or three. And then I wrote the third book. And by the time I got it all done, I was like, okay, now let's get this out there. And so then I started hunting for editors and, and I went back and forth a lot between traditional or self. And I'm like, I've been putting this on hold for, t for a, like a, like a decade. I'm tired of waiting. So that's when I decided to go in that um, direction. And you published then what with Kindle or did you go with a bunch of different ones? I went with a bunch of different ones. I had signed on at the time with a sort of a co-op, I guess is, is kind of how they just described themselves and they're called um, Indies United. And so they, the owner of that, she kind of, she helped me sort of get adjusted to the process. I didn't know how to, how to upload your books, all the steps you have to do. And um, that was helpful. I, in the last, uh, in this past year, they started increasing prices for stuff. Like if you, they, she has like a marketing fee mm -hmm. to help cover the advertising costs. And now, now then, then they're going to charge a fee to, to publish your book. And I'm like, I don't like where this is, the direction this is going. So I've officially, I left that publishing company and I re-released those books under my own name. So they have new covers. I had written um, novellas to go between them because there's it's it's the series started to get gigantic by that time. <laughs> I'm like, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to leave my publisher, I'm going to take, I'm going to make some new covers because I had to, because the third cover doesn't quite match the other two because I had a different designer that did the first two. Right. So I redesigned the covers with the same one that did the, the third one. And I combined the novellas into the, into the main books. And so I, I've re-released them a month ago. That's the uh, expanded content, the new covers and all of, you know, now, did you choose to go with KU or did you choose to go ahead and put a price on it and then put it in several other ebook vendors? Uh, right now, it's just in K, uh, it's in Kindle. K KU, yeah, and Kindle. I might go, I, I was a wide release before. I am not at the minute because this re releasing books is expensive. <laughs> Uh, new I don't covers. know anything about it. Oh, the covers, yeah. the covers. Yeah, and uh, the formatting cost because I had to. It wasn't just about taking the old uh, books because I expanded them, so I had to redo the formatting on the new books, and that was an additional expense. The new covers were an expense, so like I'm kind of doing it in a st stages. So eventually, I probably, uh, I probably um, might go back to a wide release but for now I'm just in Kindle. And what's the name of that series? It's called um it's sorry it's it's the season uh, it's a season a season a season uh, can't talk a season uh, a season so, sorry oh, that's I'm quite all right blocks. um that's quite all right is there a chat? Is there a chat on here? There is. It. Might is be it easier a, to type that. Is it a season of strife? It's not. That's the sequel. It's, it's a season. It. I've got a chat open here. It's a season. Can't find chat. Sorry. Uh, down at the bottom. Ah, there it is. No. Sorry. That's quite all right. No, there's Good nothing to be sorry for. Uh, I have those days where it's bad and I'm just, I'm just in the middle of one of those. Yeah, there it goes. I see it now. A season of angels. Yes. Oh, wow. A season of angels. And there's three books in that? Yes. Yeah. There were, there were, there, there, there were five when it first came out. The main three. The, the novellas. The, they're just three. Wow. I'm, there will definitely be a link to these in the description for this uh, video. Uh, mm -hmm. I definitely want to have a look at those. 
because I, well, I know without, I know from previous conversations via messenger that your Vela is connected to yes. your novels. So yeah. my next question is mm -hmm. when did you hear about Kindle Vela and, you know, when did you jump in? Well, I had, it was not that long. There's not that long. It was before um, August from last year. I, I, I was, I had completed that first book, the, those first books. And I had decided a new one that I'm going to do, uh, a connected, you know, a, a story. And at first, my goal was I'm going to release a novella the, the way I had done before. It takes sort of that same path. And I was going to, re, to, to write a novella that kind of served as a a bridge between the first one and the, and the new one. Mm -hmm. And I did that. I wrote the novella, I completed it, and I was getting ready to get an editor to take a look at it. And that's when I came across the Vela. I, was, I can't remember if it, if it was an ad or I saw it like um, on a group, but somewhere I saw people talking about it. I'm like, this could be interesting. I'm like, Instead of doing the path I'd done before, which is you write the the novellas to lead in to or tie into the bigger books, I wanted to take that novella and turn it into a the Bella project. Nice. And so that's what I did. I took, I think, the first five of the chapters, and that was the beginning of that story. I mm -hmm. took the last two, that was going to be ending of it. And then I had all this space between to figure out what the rest of the story was. And so I started to, to outline. I, I wrote maybe about um, eight episodes with no outline. And I'm like, I can't. I'm not, I can't. I'm not a pantser, no. Yeah. I, I try, but I got I have I have to have at least a structure. It still will change. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm even now I, I can go pull up my outline. And there's stuff in the outline that's not in the story. It just, right. It just, it, it occurs. I, I need the structure just so I know all the beats that have to happen. So once I did that, then I just started and yeah. Yeah. And I love this. I love this Vela. And uh, the name of this Vela is the Wiles of Esther. And you have like the best art. You're doing great ads. You're killing it on your ads. They are beautiful. Um, and that's another thing I want to ask you. So ha have you, you've been pretty successful with Esther out there, I think. I have been. Yeah. yeah. And have you been happy with it? Uh, yes, I have been. I've really enjoyed the experience. It's been a fun way. To, it's sort of just to keep myself to write. Um, that schedule kind of helps. Um, and I, I, it, it, you know, because there's 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 this the, the, there's that long pause if you're writing a book where mm -hmm. you and the story, and you don't get the feedback and the response from readers until it's out there. When this way, you're getting the feedback constantly. You That's are encouragement too. Uh, to this see, is true. Engage in the story and. And that brings me to the next question, which is what do you think of the new uh, polling option? Are you going to use that in your next Vela? Because I happen to know that you finished Esther. Yes. At uh, how many how many episodes did you wind up with on that one? 51. 51. It was going to be fit is it, it, at the first at first in my outline, it was 50 and I got to the ending and I like the ending was just so abrupt which would have worked for my original plan, but I, this isn't working. So I wrote an epilogue just to kind of tie it up and to tease some more stuff to come. Um, so it expanded from, from beyond what I had imagined. But yeah, on the polling question, I, th I think it's, it's pretty interesting. I would like to see some more stuff like that. Maybe comments could be fun. I, I, I am concerned though know, with the potential for like some, some like, like spam comments that could be in that, but for now, I think the polls is kind of an interesting way. I kind of wish you could go and add them on stories that you scheduled, because right. the next story that I'm doing on Bill, I've already scheduled myself up to July. 
Oh, goodness. A story. So I'm like, I can't go and add polls now to those episodes. They're not going to come out for a month. But you mean to tell me you cannot? You really cannot add yeah. polls? I've scheduled the episodes. I've gone back into them. I can um, edit the episode, but the option for polling, it won't allow you to type anything in there. I see. I see. So I think I it has to be on another it was just done on another frame, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So I, those episodes, they don't come out for a month, but I still can't add polls. But, I'm, I, but I am on the next ones I write. Uh, right. Okay. Okay. Polls, just to test them out. And, yeah. So I had no idea you were so far into having a new work ready for us to take a look at. What's the name of the new one? It's this. It's the Sisters of... Um, I'll just type it because I'm going to. Oh, I remember this. I remember. I remember. Sisters of Night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be so good, you guys. And that was not the Night. plan that I had. I have another, I had a, another um, um, idea that was going to be the next one. It was going to be more of a direct, um, the sequel to my first books. And as I got to the end of Esther's story, I introduced a character right at the end. And I'm like, I like this character. She's, the whole idea around her was pretty um, interesting. And then all of a sudden, all these ideas started coming. And I'm like, okay, now I've got to put this other idea, push it back. Because <laughs> this idea was kind of like, I've got to do this. Wow. Wow. That's exciting. Yeah. That's and exciting. I've got I've got a tease that's going to occur in this new story. This that if I did not have this story first, it wouldn't really work with my next story because the, there's going to be a tease in this story that you won't get the reveal of until the next uh, story. So I'm really excited to sort of see the the connections from my first books through Esther and this one and on it um, out. Okay, so we have The Wiles of Esther, which is a season of strife, right? Yes. Okay, now here's the $65,000 question. And then we have then we have The Sisters of Night, which is yes. a continuation of this yes. same large arc, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, for your Vela, The Sisters of Night, mm -hmm. are you making a whole new story frame or are you going to continue on with Esther at 52, reskin the thing and call it the Sisters of Night. This is a whole different thing. Um, okay, so a brand new frame. All new characters. Um, that one character that I introduced, this is her and the family that she has. There are five, uh, there are five of these people, the sisters. Right. Their whole story. Okay. This is my first time introducing the the witchcraft um, um, into this whole story because at the very beginning and the rest of it there were just angels and the demons and demons. Yeah, I thought so. The vampires, and I really didn't. That was really my plan was to not have any of that stuff um, um, in there. I just wanted to be angels and the demons. That was just going to be it. And then once I got to the end of Esther, and I, I thought, well, I've got the witch now, the first time I, I brought a witch into the story, I've got the vampire. There's a vampire that's in the story now. I've got my own ideas of how they fit within the world I've created. Mm -hmm. like now I've got, got this whole excuse now to tell this story. And so I don't, right now, there's not a plan to have Esther um, in the story. That could always change. She could always make a cameo. She could always pop in. I've, I've that's kind of the fun thing about seeing this story I, I've done is I've gives me all these little chances to pop in characters from yeah. there's a sequence right around episode. I can't remember the episode. It's right in the middle of the story where I pull back from Esther's story and I bring a guest appearance from the books um, you know that I wrote before. Right. So, oh four or five episodes, there's no Esther in it. It's just this character from the first books. And it, that was that was kind of fun to kind of, it was kind of a fun thing to do for people if you've had a chance to, to read the first books, this gives you a little piece of that story 
from those books that kind of continues that on and then teases what else is to come. And then you get right back into um, Esther. I love epic worlds where characters can, um, you know, interchange. Do you read any Christopher Moore? Do you know of that author? Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. yeah, he he does that. Yeah. You know, each one of his books is a standalone with the exception mm -hmm. of maybe A Dirty Job, which he did a sequel to, right? Yeah. But uh, he does, he has his characters cameo all the time. Yeah. And I just love it. You know, avid, rabid fans really yeah. love that stuff. That's just, it's so fun because it, I, I, that's one of the things that I think I like about telling a story is the chance to see all the connections. Yes. Even though in that piece of the story that um, 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 Esther um, is not um, um, in it, the consequences, the actions that take place um, in those um, episodes affect um, Esther. Her story yeah. ends up tying into it. You just don't, at the time, you don't see those connections until um, Esther returns. And then you see the thread start and you see how those um, um, actions have the consequences in the rest of the story. Right. And man, when you, as a reader, once you've read that and you just, you just put them all together on the shelf and you're like, I, I have a special secret. I've lived in this world. I yeah. know all these people, you know, and it's, it's a special feeling. So I love these kinds of, of uh, connections and connective tissue between yeah. the books, if you will. Um, what was I going to ask you? Just, oh, yeah, yeah. Now we can certainly expect to see, since you wrapped up Esther with 51 and mm -hmm. an epilogue, are we yeah. going to see that bundled off now to KU as a, as a novel? It, that is the plan. Um, the thing is, is I don't want to release it until I have the others too. Oh, the next oh. story and the one after that done on Bella. And once I do, because I kind of like the idea of I've, I've had in the past the readers that enjoyed the fact that they didn't have to have the weight or right. the weight between the books. So I kind of want to release them fairly, like uh, like maybe like like a month between. Oh wow, yeah. Not fast, and I the, and the reason why too is it's going to going to take me a while to get these stories done. These other two, and I've got a novel I have to finish by October. Ooh, that so I've got to I've got to have time to do that too. So I've got I've got so much to write; it's like insane. And I'm like I'm I'm kind of like I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of anxious because I want to get more done on this new story that's about to come out in a month because then I got to pause, write the novel that are com or complete the novel that I have coming out you know, um, it, um, in October and then go back to Bella. Now, what has created this deadline? Is this something that you have like promised your readers? Yeah, I've been teasing. I had a, a year ago, I, 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 I got involved in my first time a charity. Uh, a bunch of authors got together to release and a charity, you know, the ants. <laughs> Anthology, mm -hmm. and I wrote a novella in that um, 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 with that that group, and the novella really took off. It was popular. I had a lot of the readers that they loved the story. So I've been sort of teasing and promising a continuation of that. So I was going to take that not novella I wrote, write the second um, um, half of it, and release it as the novel. So I kind of been teasing October on Instagram about it. And so I kind of put myself in that spot where I have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. You kind of do. That's yeah. You don't want to disappoint them. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah that would be a mistake. Um, I, 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 and this character for this story, I, I love this character. And so I'm really excited to get the, the novel complete. And I'm writing a short story at the moment. I kind of paused the other story on Villa because I've got a charity that I'm doing on I've done a charity like there's a charity um, that I've done anthology called Dark Paris Ooh. that's in it and 
that I've got, and there's another one coming out in two months, and I'll go ahead and type the names in here. So the, the, the first novella that I did is in this anthology. Untouched Heroes, volume one. That sounds good. Yeah, that, that, that was fun. Um, my story is not quite the fit for the rest of them. The rest of them are steamy, the romance. Uh, it all started because there was a bookstagrammer who was talking about how much she hated the virgin, uh, the trope in books. And so I came up with it. My idea was at first just, just a joke. Uh, Cause I was, I saw her post about this and I joked about, cause the whole, the whole, the one of the part of the complaint about the virgin tropes is the idea that virginity equals you're innocent. And the minute you lose that, you lose your innocence. And so I made a joke about a teenager a ch uh, who fits all the stereotypes of, of the blonde ch ch cheerleader type. Mm -hmm. She's innocent, she's a virgin, but she's a killer. Ah, oh, nice. And so that, that joke became an idea that became a, a story. So that was my first anthology. And the next one, which is also out, is called Dark Paris. That's a, that, that story in there is a continuing, it, it continues her story, but she's now an adult. And then I've got- Still a killer? Yes, she's still a killer. She's living in Paris. Um, and that was fun. That, that was a, this whole, that whole character is a crazy story. I've actually thought about doing her in Avella. Uh, and I might still, because there's, there's a lot of stories of her. There's a lot of potential for stories of her as an adult. Now, how did you make her, how did you make us like her? Like, like, you know, Dexter, Dexter, yeah. He he was doing everybody a favor. So you yeah. forgave Dexter because he, you know, he was grinding up, you know, bad guys in the meat yeah. grinder, you know. I kind of refer to her as the feminist version of that character. I see. <laughs> people she kills are not that good people. Um, one of, um, I kind of do a little tease, not going to tease so much, but one of the characters she she kills in, the, in, in the first book or the first story was um, he allowed some high school boys that had committed um, the, the date right because they were the stars of the football team. He kind of allowed them to get off without being punished. So she kills him. She tends to kill people that are the, the rapists, the abusers, that kind of thing. So that's that's sort of how I work into that and kind of making you go, oh, okay, I don't like what she's doing, but I can kind of go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and plus it's just kind of fun to sort of imagine. Of course, you see the way she behaves, sweet and the 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 bubbly sort of personality. You don't imagine her to be that. What's her cover career? What does she do? Um, in the book, she's just a cheerleader because she's still in she's still in she's still in high school. Right. As an adult, um, I kind of tease the idea that she's sort of that the world believes that she that she, the world believes that that she died. And so when you see her in the the dark Paris, she's living under a fake name. Let's see, she's dead, and she's sort of fighting the urges to kill. Ah, uh -huh. she does. Yeah. She might get caught. You know, it doesn't pay for a writer to sit around and think too much about. <laughs> I wonder how many people there are out there that are actually <laughs> flipping like this. You know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's frightening to think about that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited though. I'm excited for um, the the uh, the sisters of the night. That's. Yes. That's going to be, that's going to be that, awesome. that, that, That's fine. It's a, the tone, if, if you've read um, Esther, you know, there's a certain tone to the story. Esther's a loner. She's a nomad. She curses mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. She's prone to the violent um, outburst. She has a, 
she she she's trying to do the right thing. She's trying to help. This other story with the witches. This is a different tone, a smaller sort of scale. There's the drama of you know you have the five of them. These uh, the sisters. The four are related by blood. One's 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 an adopted sister. The adopted sister is the star kind of of the whole story. Right. Right. So they all they all have to live they all they live in the, the um the, 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 the sorry the family house ah the parents passed their parents had died a long time before the story um um you know began so there's the the there's the drama that you would get from you know you know from that got a little gray gardens going on yeah yeah <laughs> not not that extreme of course but <laughs> but five yeah. fairly i mean if you're if you're a witch you you adopt a certain amount of eccentricism yeah you know regardless you got, you got, there's a lot of the angst there too there's one of the sister there are two of them that are called the twins um even though they're not actually twins they were born one year apart to the day which is why they're which is why they're called the, the twins and they they do look a lot alike, I say, in, in the story. And there's one that's the tr troublemaker, and that's all she does. She goes out, they go out, they party every night, they cause a lot of trouble. That's going to become kind of an incident that will happen um, in the books. And well, yeah, that, 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 was, that was fun to kind of go in a different tone. From that's pretty cool. Her. I do look forward to that. That ought to be really, really awesome because you know I like witches. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, it was too to, it was fun too to try to figure out a way to do the that story the the just the just the magic itself in a way that still fits with the world I've already done. Yeah, because they live in the same world, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So it kind of had took me a while to figure out exactly how to make it, it work to where you would not go, well, well, how's this possible that this person that's not an angel can do this, this kind of stuff. So I've got a whole story of uh, uh, the backstory to how that happened. And it ties into some other stuff from, from Esther. So. Now, what I've read of the wilds of Esther, it's set in San Francisco and New Orleans, right? Yes. And so where is this one? This is in the Lafayette um, area. Oh, Lafayette. Okay. They live on an estate kind of out of the city. They have this huge f f family home. There's a few of those around Lafayette, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah. And you are somewhere in that, you're somewhere down in Louisiana. In the I'm in te Texas. Texas. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I was just going to remind you, you know, as we were talking about your little blonde haired, blue eyed uh, cheerleader murderer mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm from Texas and we got got a saying some people need killing. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that fits. <laughs> and when you're down in Texas, you, you choose. So. <laughs> At least that's you're funny. just writing them out of existence. That's good. <laughs> here's the here's here's the funny thing too. I have a lot of friends, and they they I had a, I, had a, I, had, I have an author friend, and she told me once just a story about this guy that was on um, Instagram that was like the troll, you know, the, the you, you you know those kind of guys. Oh yeah, passing her, all that kind of stuff. And I was in the middle of editing this story for this kid character for the first story of her. And I'm like, what's the name of the guy? Because I've got in the story that she kills this guy, but I'm not really tied to, to you know, you know, with the name. So just give me his name and I'll change the name and you can read about him in fiction getting killed. She's like, okay. <laughs> He's just red shirt guy. Let's so give she him gave me his name and I changed the name in there. And so I kind of I make a joke now. So I we're free. If you've got a guy that's pissing you off and you see him um um killed in the most ridiculous way just get his name up put him out. i'm always looking for a victim of this for this character, so now take him out for you that's good yeah. <laughs> i love that i absolutely love that and if you ever get into an argument you can simply stare at him and say i've killed for you 
<laughs> That's my thing. Every time I see someone talk about that, I've got a victim for Apple because because her name is Apple. Oh, uh, oh, wow! You know, what a name. name, character. This I love this name. Well, you come up with some good names. I tell you, just Esther to me is like a magical name. It's a I don't know. It evokes something, and I don't. I don't know why it's so yeah. evocative. Of I don't know, but it's a beautiful that, name. That Old. name just pop. Yeah, you know, that name just. It just. I don't know. It just. I don't know how how um, um, how it came about, but I was. I had wrote the first books. The first books is where she, the first time that you see her, she appears in the first books, and. She just captured my imagination because she was such a different character. The main character of the first book is the complete opposite from Esther. She's compassionate. She's kind. She, and not to say that Esther is not compassionate and kind, but she Esther sort of has a rougher edge. She sure does. Yeah, she's a diamond and, in the rough. Esther yeah. is. But and the so only when place, I, oh no, please go ahead. No, no, you went. I was going to say the only other place I'd seen a character named Esther was John Irving, uh, used that name. Okay. Are you familiar with John Irving? Yeah, yeah. Was Prayer for Owen Meany? Yeah, okay, yeah. That was Owen's girlfriend, Esther. It's the only other place I've seen it in fiction, uh, but of course, you know, I'm not that widely read, but still, it's an unusual yeah. name. You're yeah. in good company, is all I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that, that character sort of, I got to the point where I got to the end of those books. I'm like, I've got to tell a story with just her because she seems like there's a lot more to her than we see. And so when I got to the the, the Vela, when I just decided to take her into that um, place, it just opened up this whole different thing. And it got, gave me the chance I wanted to really see who this character was and to, to explore, to go beyond just what you see in the in those first books. Um, and even the first books, you do learn the, the story of her, mm -hmm. the back of her, which is not a happy story. No. So you explore that a lot more in the in this story with us. You learn a lot more about where she came from. Kind of, you learn a bit why she has that sort of that rougher edge, you know, that she has. Well, I'm a KU member, so uh, I'll be I'll be going out and checking these out. Yes. Um, yeah, most definitely. I, I really do. I love your, the whole universe that you've built there. I, everybody's calling it world building. That's what it is. But to me, it's just a, you know, alternate reality for yeah. a writer. It's just an alternate reality, buddy. Yeah. And I go and live there in my head every time I sit down to this keyboard, you know? Yeah. Um, so the next thing I want to ask you, I always ask this of everyone. Are you reading any Vellas? Would you care to give any shout outs? Yeah, I'll talk, because I'm, I'm gonna have... That's when I've been struggling right with. Yeah. Serial fit, 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 fiction. Um, Is that the name of a story? Yeah. No way. Serial yeah. fiction? Yes. <laughs> It, the character kind of reminds me a bit of Apple, which is probably a reason why I, I liked it. But plus, I just I just like her whole style to come all together. Um, I, I, I'm trying to get a lot more time to read. I have not had that much time lately. Just right. trying to get all these all this stuff written. I've got a, I've got this story I'm working on and a couple others. So I just haven't had as much time to read as I would would like um but I, i'm hoping to get back um into it you know you only get so many hours in a day so i find myself envying people like you who put your writing as a priority while i sit there and just consume these stories <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i and then then i look at the time and the day is gone and yeah. i've spent all the time just reading and whatnot and uh, just not getting as much work as I'd like to get done. Done. I, I haven't really actually bounced back since the COVID. I, yeah. I haven't come back to my normal self yet, but I, I think that it will happen. I, I believe it will. Yeah. It, it's kind of like getting hit by a truck. You get up by yeah. degrees. 
I can imagine. Yeah, that would not be fun. Well, I'll for sure look up serial fiction and uh, get it into the the um, description of this video, along with clickable links to everything that you've written. And uh, let's see, what other thing would I like to ask? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Jeff Bezos has told us all that he wants Christopher Stanfield to be in charge <laughs> of Kindle Vela. <laughs> you want to name us two things that you would change if you had such power? That's a tough one. Um, I would... I mean, I don't know if there's if anything in particular. I would like to see more tools kind of, kind of in the idea of the polls to kind of allow more of the opportunity for a reader to engage with each um, episode as opposed to just a review, which reviews are great. But it'd be interesting to get that because I'm one of those people as a writer that I, I love the mysteries that I, I, I put a lot of the mysteries into the stuff I write. Mm -hmm. and I, to see if a reader is able to figure it out. There's, um, and I'll use an example, there's a mystery that forms pretty much the heart of my first book, book the books. And I've teased it throughout the, the from the first book to, to the third, I teased that whole mystery and I don't reveal it until that final book. Mm -hmm. And I always, anytime someone tells me that they're starting to, to read those books, I tell them, well, when you get to this certain chapter, I want to know if you got an idea of what the answer um, is. And I've yet to meet a reader who's been able to piece it together. And that sh shocked me because I was so concerned when I, when I finished the book and I got it back from my, you know, my editor gave me the book back after the final pass. I'm reading that part. I'm thinking, I put this like on the nose, you're going to get to it and you go, oh, I've got that, you know, and, you're, and the whole thing's going to be spoiled before you get to, to, to the reveal in the third book. So I've yet to, to find a reader that's been able to somehow has not been able to piece it together after that first book. And so I think that'd be fun to have that ability for ask a question or see if, if the readers in an episode have been, have been able to figure out whatever thing you're teasing. Yeah, that's that would be fun. That would be fun. I don't think I'm clever enough to put mysteries in, but, uh, and I, I'm, I'm very crappy at getting them out. I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Opaki wrote this cool story. He's one of our fellow Vela authors. Uh, it's called humans are scary. It's about a little, yeah, yeah. About a little older dude. Mm -hmm. And he said, he swears there's like some kind of mystery in like the first, Oh, I don't remember first like seven chapters. And I've gone back through and reread and read. And I couldn't find out what he was talking about. So I've just decided I'm lame. That's all. <laughs> um, but there's got to be a way. I was I, this just crossed my mind. Uh, are you going to use the comments in the Sisters of the Night to tell people about Esther? I'm worried about Esther that she's not going to. Oh, if you're worried about Esther, okay. There's, I, I don't know how far you've met you that that you've gone um, in Esther's story. I think it was only 10, 10 episodes. I checked that earlier. Episode, I think the 42 and the next one after are that, um, I think the episode 43 was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I wrote, I, I, I had that in my outline and I'm coming up to that episode for a week beforehand. I, I, I'm like, I do not want to, to write this piece. Cause I know, cause I've not, I'm not a stranger to writing emotional stuff. I've done what it. What have you done? What have you yeah, done? My, my first book, the, the next to last, I can't remember what the chapter, what it is. There's a chapter in that first book I wrote that I cry I cried the first time I, that I was trying to write it because it was just so emotional what the what the main character has to go through. And when I came to this part in an Esther story, it, it was way it was t t 10 times worse than that one. And I thought that one was hard to, to write. So yeah, Esther goes through a lot. And if you haven't gotten yet to, uh, um, to episode 43, just know it's not an easy stuff to read. Um, it's emotional, and uh, I I tried to re to go back over that episode again to reread it. And I, I I just can't. <laughs> well, 
Well, I, I can see some, I can see a, a stern message coming from me after <laughs> I'm finished with those episodes. I hope you haven't done anything foolish to my Esther. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that. It's that, rough. Tough, yeah. It's rough when you, you know, the, it, 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 it makes me think of George R. R. Martin. Yeah. How'd that sucker do it? He'd just kill them off right and left, you know? I know, I don't know. You just be getting to know them, you like them and stuff, and boom, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever going to get over Ned Stark being killed so early. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Sean Bean is either. <laughs> oh, the- my favorite review that I got on the third book in my first, you know, series, it was nothing. She's, she's not, I used to call her a friend. She's someone I met through Instagram who saw my posts about my books and she, she liked them. She, she followed them. She bought my books. She, she read them. She reviewed them. That's a friend, honey. Go ahead. She, so <laughs> she wrote a review for that third book. And I, I can't remember how she began the review, but I think she said, I think her first word was someone call the 911 and report a mass mur- m- murder because there's a lot of death in that, that third book. <laughs> I, I just love that. I saw that review and I died when I saw it because I'm just like, okay, fair. <laughs> oh, here in a second, I'm just gonna hang up on you so I can go get those books. <laughs> okay, that's done. We're all done now. But <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I guess yeah that (laughs) oh i'm i'm looking forward to it this has been a great time christopher um so i'm gonna have all those links down in this video description is there anything you'd like to say to folks that are going to be clicking on those links so the charity pieces the the you know the untouched heroes dark paris all of the proceeds they go to charity um, for those, I've got another one coming out in a, mu- a couple months. I'll go ahead and type it here so you can have that. Dark, Dark New Second. Orleans. Ooh. And so this is the first time that the other ones, the Untouched Heroes, Dark Paris, that was all um, Apple. Those stories and those were Apple, or had my character called Apple Rose. Right. This one coming out then, that's a character from Esther's story. Sass? Is it Sassafras? No, no it's, uh, there's, there's a character you haven't yet met, met. I think she's in episode tw- tw- 25. She's ah. a nun that lives in a c- convent um, there in that city. And uh, and you got everything. You got the damn nuns involved, man. Yeah, this is a nun and, and she's called the demon n- nun. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. She was such an interesting c- 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 character to me that when I saw this pop up, they were looking for authors to, to write a story for this thing. I thought, well, I've got a character that's in New Orleans, and she's a, there's a mystery about her. Is she a demon? Is she something else? And so this is a great chance to write kind of an origin, you know, s- story. That's so super cool. For her, and that's gonna, that will be c- coming out with that. I look forward to meeting her. What's her name? Sister Elizabeth. Oh my God. That's my eldest sister's name. <laughs> and she's like this, you know, devout Catholic person. Oh, this, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Interesting. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the, and the funny thing, too, about this story is that I paused in Esther's story to write this. And by the time I wrote it and I sent it off, I had gotten back into Esther. And there was a, a moment when I was writing in the story that I had an excuse to bring her back into the story. And so this has got kind of fun because what I did in that, uh, in that, in that origin story, it had an impact on what I did when I brought her back for a cameo of appearance so that next appearance uh um, answer story kind of ties back to that story that's in the that's about to come out so. it impacted a whole nother storyline yeah so you can yeah you you if you and that's kind of the fun thing i have about this series is you i've tried as much as i can to write it in a way that you don't have to read the first books 
to have a good time with this story. Mm -hmm. But if you do go and read the first books, you'll get a lot more stuff that you don't, that you won't catch. Yeah. I try I, to it, kind of do, and it's not an easy thing to do, but. It really pops out that third dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. And I look forward to reading those books. I really, really do. So, okay. So that's it. That's what you're saying to your readers. You're saying that my anthologies, they're all charity. Be sure yeah. to read those. Um, and I've got to deepen I'm, that. I'm working <laughs> on a possible story. I, I'm, I'm trying to finish it. There's another, the same group that does these anthologies. They're doing one. I'm about to talk the name of that. That I have till two months from now to, I've got a story that I have halfway uh, complete. In the dark I, Venice. Yeah. Wow. I've got a story half, I'm halfway through with that. I'm going to, I'm hoping maybe the weekend to get it done because I need to get back into the Bella, uh, uh, the stuff. So, yeah. So I'm looking at something here dark Paris dark new orleans mm -hmm. dark venice yeah so i know you wrote all those for charity and i don't i don't really understand how rights or anything works yeah but would it be possible for you to come out with like a dark anthology of your own that 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 would be pretty cool i i have to go back and look at the contract i can't remember there's a certain t t time period at, at, um uh, I, it's after which that the, that the rights go back to me. Right, right. So there's a brief point, exclusivity yeah. so they can get some money going. Yeah. Yeah, cool. At some point, the rights will come back to me. The very first story I wrote for the, the, the Untouched Heroes, that ends in August. So when August comes around, that story will be back to me. That's when I'm hoping to get the second half of it done so I can release um, Apple's first story as as the just the novel yeah great wow but i i would read that dark anthology that sound doesn't that sound good it just sounds yeah. good doesn't it? it would be cool yeah well I'm, i will wait for it <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well i thank you so much for taking time to be here on uh lawless interviews and um we'll have all the links in the comments like we normally do we'll have his shout out we'll have his socials and you'll be able to find this writer and his stuff uh, by coming to Hella Vela. So with that said, see you guys. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.